Hello, good afternoon. This is Sonic Harpalotti. So today uh, we're going to talk about uh, a life philosophy that we all have, or that some of us have, that everything happens for a reason. So if it's true that you believe that everything happens for a reason, then your life is in a divine order. You see, if you believe in that philosophy, if you believe that that philosophy is true, that everything happens for a reason, then there's a life lesson of the experiences, the situation, or the people that trouble you that lies in wait. So we repeat that phrase, yet um, we remain troubled or overwhelmed or emotionally attached to things that happened to us in the past in some way. And things uh, or things that have occurred or situations that have occurred in our lives. So from my perspective in the work that I do and in my personal life, there is always a way if you allow it and also agree to what happened in your life. All of the people, the experiences and the traumas in my personal life were very intentional to wake me up, not only to my potential, but to new beliefs and personal practices and perspectives, and also to my professional work as an alchemist. I wouldn't be here today and as effective as I am in my work if I would not have had the divine order of the life that brings me here today. So, of course, there are some things that feel like they won't go away or you can't let go of because the life lesson lies in wait. And oftentimes there's definitely more than one. What are you not perceiving, realizing, allowing, accepting, or receiving? What beliefs do you need to look at or change? In a future live, I'll talk about how profoundly we are conditioned uh, from the moment of conception. So what do you believe? What are your perceptions? And what are the attitudes you have about this situation? Does it impact the emotional, of, emotional freedom, uh, the level of emotional freedom that you have? and the effect that it has on your life. See, I personally believe that you can heal anything. And that's not to be misunderstood as being uh, emotionless, emotionless or um, erasing something of your life. Of course, in some situations, you can do that. Adversity can inspire a passion for living and grant you entry to a powerful mission. So my question is this, how does the experience and the imprint of that experience, what you carry here, the echo of that experience that occurred years ago, how does it reside in you today? How does it impact your life? Is it disease proofing? Does it create moodiness? Does it restrict your life in some way? Or does it fill your life with energy or contemplation? Or does it direct your spiritual self into deeper awarenesses? You see, we can become attached to events as well as the effect that life that we create, that these events can have on us. So there's three things that I want to share to you with you today about my personal belief that you can heal anything. So first I want to give you a quick story of a client I saw about 25 years ago. Actually, she was one of my first clients that taught me that our life experiences reside and manifest themselves within the physical body. Okay, so I noticed that this woman 
um, that every time that she talked about her mom, that there was just a little bit of movement in the shoulder. It was kind of like a twitch. So not sure what that was because I was still learning back then. I took her into, uh, I took her off into another direction, came back to mom, same thing. Shoulder was kind of moving up and down. So then I went back and forth a couple times and I was pretty sure that there was a pattern there was a release pattern here or a holding pattern of her relationship that was troubled with her mom. So anyway, um, I decided that I would put my finger, I said, I, so I explained to her what I was observing. And I said, if I put my finger here, uh, just take a couple of breaths and tell me what happens. So the next thing I know, she's gasping. She says that when I was a child, my mother, used to do this on my shoulder right there every time she was making a point or she was um, like, you know, reprimanding me for something or she was yelling. So anyway, um, she had totally forgotten about that, but the body keeps the score. The body remembers, the body holds these tensions. So I held my finger here. And what she discovered was this point in the imagery, the body communicates to us through imagery. The subconscious mind communicates through the body, through imagery. So what happened was I held my finger here. And so we did some processing work and went back to one of these experiences. And she realized that over time, what happened was that there was like a sword, a, a very pointy sword that, that touched the tip of her ovary. Okay, then there was another profound insight. Every other month in her menstrual cycle, where she would be, men uh, the eggs would be released from that left, well, <laughs> her left side, but I'm just using the right side here, um, is that she, uh, she had this mis like undiagnosed pain there. She had gone to doctors because it was very gripping and very difficult for her every other month in her period. So she saw that the tip of this sword uh, penetrated the, uh, the ovary. So what we did is we literally extracted the the sword that represented the you know the pain that her mother had inflicted on her and incidentally she laughed later saying that her mother always had very pointy nails which i think was popular in the 60s so anyway we extracted the sword filled re reintegrated the experience in her body in a new way and she went went on about her life. About six months later, I got a call from her and she said that she wasn't sure because she wanted to wait and give it some time. But those every other month, her cycle had, had changed and she didn't have the pain in, in that ovary anymore. So, uh, so, so a couple of things. See, Candace Pert's work, Jean Achterberg's work, Dawson Church's work, Bessel van der Kolk's work, all of the research points to the fact that the subconscious mind resides in the body. The level of stress, the level of burden that you carry subconsciously is expressed here through disease conditions, aches and pains, uh, restricted mo you know, mobility and so forth. So uh, number two, so that's number one, is that the subconscious mind lives here and your entire life resides within you and the subconscious. So the other piece that I wanna share with you is number two is that we, we read about people against all odds who have survived, healed, and thrived. Elizabeth Smart is a, a young woman who comes to mind. I know of an individual who is alive today after a bout of stage four pancreatic cancer. Um, I can share with you 
of an 88-year-old client who came in. He was given less than a 10% chance of surviving his surgery. And if he survived, the pain of the treatment would be excruciatingly difficult for him. Well, he survived the surgery and the, uh, the treatment by using his mind power. So there is no adversity or no situation that someone has not ever, has not survived. So why can't that be you? Okay, so, um, so number three, so, so I also believe that within all of us, we, there are resources outside of us and within us to find our way. Um, my personal and professional life also tells me that you can heal anything. Um, a client, uh, she, uh, she was an aunt of a four-year-old niece who died in her care. She was destroying herself because of guilt in, what, in her belief that she caused the death. After adversity, many years of adversity, I can speak for myself, be more, speak up for myself. I can be more clear with my boundaries and also have a mission to help others how I have helped myself. So building internal resources, facing and discovering the powers that you have within yourself, learning how to build traits of well-being because we focus so much on symptom reduction getting rid of the pain we forget that we can begin to expand and craft and cultivate well-being in lots of simple ways throughout our lives so healing your personal wounds can become a natural evolutionary approach that you have to life because if you believe that um, that, uh, that everything happens for a reason, then you also have to believe that the events, the people, the situations that occur in your life are there for a powerful, powerful reason so that you can discover the, you know, the lessons that you need in your life. So as you begin to trust in your struggles and, uh, and that the life lessons are uniquely yours. My life lessons are different than yours. My struggles have been different than yours. My healing has, is different than yours. It's through this lens, this life lens, that we look out into life and life comes in to us that we need to discover what, what it is that we need to understand and learn in our lives. When a time when I needed to learn patience, it seemed like everything that I was struggling with, the situations and the people that were coming toward me were calling me to develop patience. So when I needed to set more boundaries, not only in my professional work, but in my personal work or to speak up in some way, those situations would come at me as a way to remind me. So how are you shaped by what things that have happened in your life? How can you be, uh, how can you be to begin to take one small step or a breath or some action for yourself toward healing. So if you truly believe that life does happen for a reason, then trust that your life is in this divine order and the gifts also lie in wait for you to embrace. So thank you so much, all of you who have joined here today. Some of you are dear friends and some of you I have not yet to meet. So hopefully one day that'll happen. So many blessings to you. I'm Sana Carpalotti and I'll see you next week at three o'clock. Many blessings. Take care. Bye-bye.